Like many others, I consider myself a huge fan of Elvis Presley. I mean, they don't call him the king for nothing. His music and work is timeless, and like any good legend, the man's living quarters even became a historical landmark. Of course, Elvis owned properties fit for, well, a king. I'm sure you've all heard of or paid a visit to the famous Graceland Estate in Tennessee, which we'll take a look at, but he also owned a gorgeous home in Beverly Hills and more. So get ready to take a trip back in time and see the places Elvis once called home. Elvis Presley, also known simply as Elvis, was a singer, musician, and actor, and referred to as the king or the king of rock and roll. His energized interpretations of songs and provocative performance style, combined with influence across color lines during a transformative time, led Elvis to great success despite controversy at first. Elvis was born in Tupelo, Mississippi and relocated to Memphis, Tennessee with his family when he was 13, also where his music career began in 1954. He worked at Sun Records recording tunes with producer Sam Phillips, who wanted to bring the sound of African American music to a wider audience. When Elvis released the single Heartbreak Hotel in 1956, it became a number one hit and with a bunch of TV appearances and chart topping records, he became the leading figure in the new and popular rock and roll. Elvis has won a handful of awards and is the best selling solo music artist of all time. With Elvis's rise from poverty to significant fame, his success seemed to embody the all American dream. Comparing the houses Elvis and his family rented and even the tiny two room home in which Elvis was born, you can see how far he came. The most famous place Elvis lived in was Graceland Mansion in Tennessee, which you can take a tour of in current times. He lived there from 1957 up until his untimely death, passing away in the home on August 16th, 1977. Although Elvis left us far too early, his memory lives on, some of which is thanks to the preservation of his estates. Hey guys and girls, it's Kara, and today I'm bringing you an extra special house tour here on Famous Entertainment. You guys requested this one, so we're gonna take a look at where the king, Elvis Presley, used to call home, including the famous Graceland Mansion in Tennessee, his Beverly Hills house, and more. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours on the likes of Michael Jackson and his famous estates, and we'll link to similar videos at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and as usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Elvis lived in a handful of homes with his family on his way to success, most being rentals, living at a grand total of nine addresses in Memphis alone. Today, some of these places are nothing more than empty lots, but a few of the homes still exist. We'll start with the house Elvis lived at on Audubon Drive before moving into Graceland. This one-story ranch-style home was located in a residential neighborhood in Memphis, Tennessee. Elvis lived here with his parents from 1956 to 1957 before moving to Graceland. He purchased the house when he was only 21 years old for $29. $9,500, putting a down payment of $500. It was not far from the family's prior residence at Getwell Road either. This house became one of Elvis's more well-known residences and it had four beds and 2.5 baths with a carport and built a couple of years prior in 1954. A brick and metal fence was installed by the Presley family and the backyard had a motorcycle garage too. Elvis had several modifications done to the home during his stay here, like turning the carport into a garage with doors on both sides and extending the driveway to the rear of the house. He also enclosed the brick patio and turned it into an extension of the spacious living room, which we can see photos of. Elvis also installed a pool in the backyard, which was reported to be the largest residential pool in the city at the time, and only in more recent times in 2006 was the pool removed. Originally, the house was painted green, then white, then green again. After Elvis's song Heartbreak Hotel became the most popular song in the nation, fans mobbed this house. The residence quickly became a focal point for fans, media, and celebrities to visit, even magazines publishing pics of the home. Police would frequently be called to deal with the mobs lining the streets, and it all became too much for the Presleys. After 13 months, Elvis moved to Graceland. This house was added to the National Register of Historic Places in March 2006, shortly before its public auction on eBay, and was last sold for $1 million. Although the house isn't currently open to the public, it occasionally hosts small events or concerts. Now for Graceland. Graceland Mansion sits on 13.8 acre 
part of land in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's where Elvis called home from 1957 up until he passed away in 1977. His daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, has been the owner of Graceland since his death, and it's located in the vast Whitehaven community about nine miles from downtown, and is not in as rural of a location as one might expect. The house was built in 1939 by Dr. Thomas and Ruth Moore, who named it Graceland in honor of a family member. The elegant column mansion faces west and is perched on a hilltop. It's described as colonial revival in style and is a two-story home spanning over 10,000 square feet inside at the time Elvis purchased it. The king bought the home from the YMCA for around 102k, according to records, and while living there, expanded Graceland to span over 17,500 square feet of space, adding more and more rooms. It has a total of 23 rooms with 8 beds and 8 baths. To the right of the entrance hall, through an arched hallway, is the living room, where these days guests are greeted by a 15-foot white couch white marble fireplace, and sparkling mirrors. The music room is attached to this space and it has peacock set in stained glass, a baby grand piano, and a 1950s style TV. The kitchen and living room are also set on the main floor of the mansion along with a bedroom and ensuite that previously was occupied by Elvis's parents. Interestingly enough, the kitchen was a part of the home not open to the public until 1995, as Elvis's aunt Delta used it until she passed in 93. In the 60s, Elvis enlarged the home to create a den on this floor known as the Jungle Room. It had natural stone walls an indoor waterfall, and Polynesian island decor. Elvis added a large wing on the south side of the main house that was a sidewalk between the music room and the pool area connected by an enclosed gallery. In recent times, this area of the home is known as the Trophy Building, featuring an exhibit about the Presley family. The second floor, which had Elvis's bedrooms and other family members' rooms, isn't open to visitors out of respect for the Presley family and to avoid any improper focus on the bathroom which where Elvis died. This level of the home has been untouched since. In his basement hideaway, you'll find some of Elvis's favorite rooms, like the TV room where he often watched three TV sets at once. Here, Elvis had his 1970s logo with a lightning bolt on the wall, as well as built-in TVs, stereo cabinets to hold his records, and a wet bar. Elvis created many lavishly decorated theme rooms at Graceland. The games room, also called the pool room for its large pool table, was created in 1974, and he had the walls and ceilings covered with pleated cotton fabric. All in all, it's said that Elvis spent 500k or more carrying out modifications to Graceland, such as the field stone wall surrounding the grounds, a wrought iron front gate shaped like a book of sheet music, a kidney shaped swimming pool, and even a racquetball court. One of Elvis's best known add ons was the meditation garden, where he would go to reflect on any problems or situations in his life. It's also now where he and his other family members are buried. After Elvis's passing in 1977, Graceland was opened to the public as a museum on June 7, 1977. And declared a National Historic Landmark in 2006. It's the second most visited house in the US after the White House, with over 650,000 visitors a year, hopefully, one of which will soon be me. Before I wrap this video up, let's take a quick look at a lesser known Elvis residence. Even Elvis had to have some property in Beverly Hills, and according to records, he and Priscilla Presley bought this home after they married in 1967 for 400K, living here part time until 1973. This stunning estate is on a street dubbed Billionaire's Row and most recently went up on the market for a whopping 30 million. This piece of Hollywood history spans 5,400 square feet of space, sitting on over one acre of land, with four beds, five baths, and an attached guest house. While the house hasn't changed much from when the Presleys occupied it, the interior has been redone and modernized since, with upgrades like stainless steel appliances in the kitchen, new floors, and floor to ceiling windows. Other features include an impressive master suite, private pool and spa, built in barbecue, fire pit, and even some skylights within the home. There are amazing city to ocean views and the home is in a prime location to say the least. Elvis was famous for greeting fans at the front gate of this place to take photos and sign autographs. Alright, so I think I'll bring this house tour to an end here. We got a look at a piece of history today and see the homes of the one and only Elvis Presley. After seeing his residences like Graceland, the Beverly Hills home, and where he got started, what did you guys think? All of this made me really want to pay Graceland a visit, that's for sure. Be sure to let me know what you thought about the King's homes down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and let me know whose house tour is next. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!